Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the SACAC Virtual College Fair this afternoon. Um, we have a great program for you and I just have a couple of housekeeping items. Um, first of all, we know that you might have some questions for our great panelists tonight. So make sure that you put your questions in the Q&A. Um, what's really helpful is that if you direct your question specifically to a school. So if you have a question, list the institution's name in your question so they know how to respond back. Um, secondly, your camera and your microphone are off so our panelists cannot see or hear you um, because this is a webinar. Sign up for more sessions. There's lots of great institutions to take a look at later this afternoon and this evening. So please feel free to sign up for any more sessions that you might find interesting. And a recording of this will be available within a week on the SACAC website. We'd also like to say thank you very much for Cambridge Assessment International Education um, for providing a sponsorship for tonight's program. So um, without further ado, I am going to turn it over to our panelists tonight. Um, first up, you're going to get to hear from Suffolk University. Awesome. Thank you so much. Let me start off by sharing my screen real quick. And hello, everybody. My name is Patrick Dean. I'm an admissions counselor here at Suffolk University located right in the heart of downtown Boston up here in the Northeast. We're finally digging ourselves out from that big snowstorm we just had recently. Um, and you can see kind of where our location is based around in the center of Boston. We're surrounded by a great culture of art, dining, sports, and most importantly, a lot of resources for jobs and opportunities for students. You can see everything that we offer right down here with all the different professional sports teams, museums, tech companies, so many historical sites in the area. It's just a great place to be a student, and it's really one of the best college towns in the country to be involved in. I'm gonna start by diving into some of our academics a little bit too. Here at Suffolk University, we have just over 70 undergraduate programs and just under about 5,000 undergraduate students. Right now, we have a stu uh, average student to faculty ratio of 15 to one, and we like to have our average class size of just about 21 students. We have two schools. We have the College of Arts and Sciences, as well as the Sawyer School of Business. Um, one thing that we pride ourselves off of at Suffolk is hands-on learning. So we wanna get you outside of the classroom and into the city as soon as we possibly can. So for example, if if you are a student involved in media and like medium film production or you're interested in broadcast journalism, we actually have our very own TV studio right on campus where we're partnered with NBC10 Boston and NECN as well, where we do our own news segments that they air to the entire region of New England. We also have partnerships with all of the different businesses located in downtown Boston, where our students can regularly go out and do actual consultation work with different businesses. Um, I believe the most recent one we did was actually doing market research for George Harwell down in the city. So it's just great hands-on learning opportunities that really gets those uh, hard skills developed for you. I also want to take a little bit of a deeper dive into some of the activities that you can do while on campus. While academics is obviously going to be the cornerstone to any college experience, it's not the only thing that's offered and that's not the only thing that's part of the college experience. As of right now, we have just over 100 clubs and organizations that you can get involved in. Those are probably the easiest ways to start making friends on a campus who have the similar vibe and who are on the similar wavelength for you as well. We also have a bunch of great leadership programs such as Student Government Association, who does a great job promoting events on campus such as I believe in 2018, we had Post Malone come to campus for a concert. And in 2019, I believe it was Toy Lanes, they got to come and do a concert for our students, which was really great. And then we have our Journey Leadership Program, which takes students on team building activities, not just throughout the city of Boston, but you get to go down to Washington DC, Barbados, and even down to Florida as well. And we also have a fun ones where like some um, high profile people from Boston come over and do some dancing with the stars over here. So it's just some great opportunities that students can um, get some hands-on opportunities with. We also have a bunch of alternative breaks and trips that students can go on. Um, some of my favorite ones are the racial justice and LGBTQ advocacy that we do down in Washington, D.C. and going down to Maryland as well. And I've known a lot of students who've taken advantage of this environmental protection project down at the Grand Canyon. Um, I've already talked about so much on the short presentation about how much the city of Boston gives us and how much the city gives to your college experience. So we always like to give back to the city as much as we possibly can with our students logging over 20,000 hours of community service last year. So it's something that we pride ourselves on and it's written right into the mission statement of the university. 
We also offer 19 NCAA Division III teams as part of the Commonwealth Coastal Conference. Um, really exciting time to get involved in athletics. Kind of fun fact about us, our women's hockey coach was actually signed with the uh, National Women's Hockey League Buffalo Buttes playing for the Isabel Cup up in Lake Placid before they sadly had to cancel the season. But our programs have been vastly expanding, joining a new conference, winning some championships. Our indoor men's track and field team won their championship last year. And it is possible to do athletics in the city of Boston. We have great ice rinks all throughout the city, our own basketball court located in our beautiful new rec center that just got fully refurbished with all new equipment in there. And then we have a couple, and then we have our athletic fields located right next to a Logan International Airport that students can play at. And we also have great international and study abroad experiences that students can get hands-on experience with, with probably the cornerstone of that being our very own campus located in Madrid, Spain. The Madrid campus is just like going to school at Suffolk, Boston, except you're in Madrid while you do it. So for example, if you come in as a business major, Business 101 at the Madrid campus is going to be the exact same as Business 101 at the Boston campus. All classes are taught by Suffolk faculty, and all classes are going to be taught in English. Even though all classes are taught in English, you're absolutely going to be exposed to the Spanish language and the Spanish culture being right in downtown Madrid. It's going to open up so many travel opportunities for you and really get you involved with everything in the city. And probably my favorite opportunity that we have is the Global Gateway Program. This is probably the easiest and cheapest way to spend your first year spring break in Madrid. It's offered to all first year students and it's something that I absolutely recommend you take advantage of. Just to show a little bit of a breakdown of our campus, right now 19% of our students are international students. We also have 12 um, cultural affinity organizations to promote the diverse body, uh, student body that we have on campus. And 34% of our domestic students identify as students of color. Just to round it out with some application information, we take the common application or Suffolk application, we require the trans transcript, essay, one letter of recommendation, and we are test optional. Some deadlines to keep in mind is gonna be November 15th for early action for any juniors or underclassmen here, and February 15th for regular decision. My contact information is right over here, and if you have any questions, please feel free to drop it into the question and answer box below. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Um, folks, don't forget to put those questions in that Q&A box at the bottom. Our panelists are able um, to take questions even when they're not presenting. So next up, you'll get to hear from Full Sail University. Thank you. What's up, everybody? Happy to be here this evening speaking with you. All right. If it doesn't play, my apologies um, as far as volume goes. Uh, but like she said, my name is Emily Miller. I'm here from Full Sail University. And if you haven't ever heard of us, we are an entertainment, media, art, and technology school down right near Orlando, Florida. And as you can see on this first slide, we are a proud supporter of creativity. Everything that we do reflects a creative, entertainment-based program. So maybe you're somebody that loves to create music, or maybe you're somebody that wants to be a filmmaker or create video games. This is the place where you can do it. Come in with your creative ideas and learn how to pursue that as a career. So I'm going to play this video. Um, again, my apologies if the volume doesn't work, but then we'll roll into talking a little bit more about the school afterwards.
So as you can see, those are just a couple of quick facts about this school. Um, a little bit about our campus down in Orlando. It is a 210-acre campus with over 60 classrooms and under uh, or over 110 different interactive labs and facilities where we do our hands-on interactive-based learning. Um, and we currently have 54 bachelor's degrees programs that we bachelor degrees programs, excuse me, that we offer in the following degree areas. Um, something that's really, really unique about our programs, just like the entertainment industry, is that a lot of these programs work hand in hand. So let's say you are a music student, you might be creating music for a video game, or maybe for a film, or maybe even for a commercial that one of our digital media students are creating. So they really interact, and the people that you work with while you're a student might end up being the people that you work with out in the industry one day. Something just to let you know about is that Full Sail is taking every precaution that we can on our campus now that we are open. Um, all of our COVID precautions are um, CDC recommended. We have students on our campus that are wearing masks. We're doing six feet social distancing. Everything on our campus is sanitized whenever we have different classes coming through. Um, but you can read more about that if you go to our website, fullsail.edu slash coronavirus. A little bit more about our campus and our graduates. Our graduates go on to do some really, really cool things out in the industry. They worked on some big projects in the past year. They have worked on some really big ones, including The Last of Us 2, which won Game of the Year, and The Ghost of Tsushima, which won Best Digital Art uh, Direction at the 2021 Game or 2020 Game Awards. So you can see a couple more stats up here. We just had a couple, or 57, graduates that were credited at the 59th Grammy Awards this year. Next up, I want to tell you a few things that set Full Sail apart as a university. Um, if you are familiar with the traditional setting of a university where you have four years for a bachelor's degree, a little bit more of a liberal arts curriculum, it's a little bit different at Full Sail. Um, the first really big difference is that all of our programs are accelerated. So instead of taking four years, they only take two years for a bachelor's degree, right about 20 months. Um, the next thing is that we have a rolling admissions. So you can start whenever you want throughout the year. We start a new class every single month. It's all depending on when you are ready to start and when you are ready, we're here for you. We also have what we like to call real world curriculum. Um, full Sail actually used to be called, instead of Full Sail University, it was Full Sail, you know, we're learning. Um, but we like to pride ourselves on the fact that students really do get hands on uh, experience for their movie or for their uh, future job. If you're working in film, you're going to be making movies. If you're working in gaming, you'll be making video games throughout the life of your program. And that ties in with the following slide. We want to make sure that every student is equipped to be successful, and that means having the right technology to do the job. So each of our students receives what's called Full Sales Project Launchbox. This is your technology package that includes a laptop and then any hardware or software uh, and additional technology that you might need uh, to be successful both as a student and then if you decide to do freelance gigs. Outside of class, we have a lot of clubs and organizations you can get involved with. A couple of my favorites are our coding club and cosplay club. But one that I want to point out is our Armada Esports League. This is our competitive esports team. Right now we compete in 10 different uh, games, including Fortnite, which you can see here, Rocket League, Smite, Rainbow Six Siege, and Super Smash Brothers. So, um, very exciting. If you are a student that is a gamer and you're good at it, you can always try out to be part of our team and come to campus and play in our fortress, which is the largest collegiate esports arena in the United States. So we're very proud about that and very excited. So if you are somebody that thinks Full Sail might be a good fit for you, a couple of things. You can reach out to me. My email's right behind me, elmiller at fullsail.com with any questions. Um, another thing to do would be to check out one of our behind the scenes tours. It takes about three hours and this is a full campus tour. Then you go into a breakout room based on your program of interest and get to hear from professors and current students. Um, you can also check out our scholarship guide and see if there are any you qualify for. If you are a senior, I highly recommend checking out our Creative Minds program, which is up to $25,000. And you can, if you are interested in receiving more information, you can scan the QR code here. And again, my email is elmiller at wholesome.com if you have any further questions. So thank you, and thank you, Courtney, for having us this evening. Hope everyone has a nice night. Thanks, Emily, and Full Sail. Um, next, you get the opportunity to hear from Tara at Muhlenberg College. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Muhlenberg College. 
Students choose Muhlenberg and faculty are committed to Muhlenberg because we are a community of learners who want to develop new skills, to stretch our imaginations, and to challenge existing beliefs. Muhlenberg is known for and proud of our community. Oh, oh I can move that, okay. While these are the numbers that you see on the screen at Muhlenberg, our students are individuals who come together to form a community. Our students are creative, they are curious, they are kind, they are resilient. Other numbers that you could, sh that you could see on this screen could be that 60% of our students study away at least one time before they graduate, choosing from over 160 study away options, and 30% of our students double major. We're recognized in the rankings for best value, best food, best theater, we've earned gold for being green, and an A-plus grade from 538 pollster ranking, and our students have been honored for their engagement in the community. We are the mules of Muhlenberg. Our student athletes play in the Division III Centennial Conference and have won more than 33 conference championships since 2000. While we are small in population, we are big on opportunities and mentorship at Muhlenberg. We are located in a suburban part of Allentown. This is in the Lehigh Valley. Um, we are 20 minutes to the totally awesome Lehigh Valley Airport, 10 minutes to downtown Allentown, Pennsylvania, one hour to Philadelphia and two hours to New York City. Fun fact, Allentown is the third largest and the fastest growing city in Pennsylvania. Our location in the Lehigh Valley lends itself to opportunities for our students to learn, to grow, to do outside of the classroom. This could be a part-time job or an internship with the minor league sports club, shadowing or doing research in the Lehigh Valley Health Network, going to museums, amusement parks, symphony halls, Target, um, we are traditional liberal arts college. Popular majors that students identify on their common application, on their first year application, is business, theater, biology, psychology. My absolute favorite is undecided. We do also offer public health. Growing in popularity among first year applicants is also neuroscience and computer science. The flexibility for you students to pursue your interests with the support of your advisors and professors leads to an enriching experience at Muhlenberg and a strong foundation for life after Muhlenberg. On the screen here are some photos from student activities, obviously pre-pandemic. Our students are active in their learning, but also active in the community, supportive of each other. They're intellectually curious. They are smart. They are kind, good citizens. And yes, they have fun. There are ways to engage um, and, and do things on campus, programming from our Muhlenberg Activities Council, our Multicultural Office, Greek Life, Knitting, Faith-Based Clubs, Affinity Groups, Acapella Groups, Intramural Sports, nearly 50 theater and dance performances each year, and so much more. Our faculty at Muhlenberg serve as scholars and mentors, often supporting students in their individual pursuits, cheering them on on stage or on the court, working with students individually on research projects and mentoring them well beyond their time on campus together. The Muhlenberg experience does lead to powerful outcomes. Our graduates go on to become change makers, teachers, scientists, actors, business owners, coaches, journalists, attorneys, designers, physicians, and so much more all leaders in their chosen field and productive members of their community and their workplace. And graduates of Muhlenberg have lifelong access to the Career Center. On campus, like on this slide here, you'll see Muhlenberg's famous red doors. This is a testament to our Lutheran roots and a sign of welcome. A little bit about the admission journey at Muhlenberg. We have been test score optional for over 20 years, so we will continue to be test score optional for many years to come. All students who choose to apply to Muhlenberg are considered for merit scholarships as well as honors consideration, and students can audition or portfolio review for a talent scholarship. 
We review applications holistically. That means we take into account all parts of a student's application to Muhlenberg, including their character and demonstrated interest, which is often done through a virtual interview with an admissions professional. When we read applications, our applicants present with a rigorous curriculum like honors and AP courses. Our, application, our applicants use their applications to speak to their passions, their interests, their talents, all of which demonstrate how they'll be a good fit within the Muhlenberg community. Since 1848, we have been an institution of higher learning committed to our students' intellectual and personal growth. I invite you to engage with us to learn more and ask your questions tonight. That's what we are here for. And if you would like a feel good moment on Instagram tonight, I invite you to check out Instagram page called Dogs of Muhlenberg for a feel good post. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Muhlenberg. Um, we've heard from some great institutions so far, and we still have three awesome ones left to go. So next up, you get the opportunity to hear from the University of West Florida. All right. All right, I hope everybody can see the screen. Uh, um, so uh, my name is Nate Benton Jr. Uh, I am with the University of West Florida. Great to be here with you all today. Uh, thank you very much for coming out. Um, so if you do not know where UWF is located, we are located in Pensacola, Florida. Uh, we are an, in the westernmost city uh, in Florida. And we are in central time zone as well. Uh, it took me about, about about a week, week and a half to get used to it. I'm originally from South Florida. Uh, it wasn't too bad uh, at all. Uh, in Pensacola, we are home to uh, a top four US beach uh, as voted by a trip advisor. So, uh, you know, your stress after class on Tuesday, uh, definitely take a stroll out to the beach and just uh, relax a little bit. Right, so we do have a big campus, smaller class sizes. Uh, we have 70 plus undergraduate degree programs for you to choose from to go along with 60 plus minors as well. Uh, we are just under 13,000 students at UWF, around 12,800 plus. Uh, and we do have smaller class sizes on average for your freshman and sophomore year. There will be uh, 28 students in your class when you get to your junior and senior year. That will shrink to about 15 to 25 students uh, in your class. Uh, so you're able to have class outside like this and really uh, have a personal connection with your professor. Um, they understand the nature of small classes and how um, you know developing those interpersonal relationships are key when it comes to your learning. Uh, the Argo life, uh, as we call it, um, we do have on campus housing from your freshman year all the way up to your senior year. Uh, we have upperclassmen housing as well once you hit that junior and senior year. Um, it's very easy for you to get involved on campus um, in one of our 150 plus student organizations. Um, these organizations are uh, academic in nature, um, you know, recreational, whatever you're looking to do. Uh, if you want to start SpongeBob Club, Barbecue Club, whatever it might be, um, you can start that on campus um, and then host events uh, like this one that you see right here hosted by our campus activity board. Uh, we are, we do sit on 1600 acres. Most of that is dedicated to the uh, wildlife sanctuary that we are built next to. Um, and then everything else is uh, campus. We do have also 20 plus miles of trails. So if you're looking to, uh, if you're an outdoors person, um, you can canoe on campus as well. We have um, water that goes into the Pensacola Pass. Um, you can bike, hike, run, whatever you want to do out there. We also have uh, intramural sports, uh, indoor sports as well. All right, uh, our Argo Athletic Band is uh, new. So if you are in the band at all, you can be a part of that. Uh, they play at all of our home games. And uh, you also have the opportunity to be in any orchestras we have. We have a choir on campus, uh, theater as well. Uh, if you're interested in that, you do not need to major in theater to be in any plays. Uh, our athletics programs are excellent. We have 15 that compete at the NCAA Division II level in the Gulf South Conference. 
103 conference championships, which is the most uh, for the Gulf South Conference and 10 national championships with our uh, reigning national championship football team uh, being the most recent champions. Right, so at UWF, we focus on high impact practices, uh, fancy word for experiential learning. Uh, so learning through reflection, learning by doing um, is really key to what we're looking to do for you. Uh, it's about putting you in the position um, to do what you're going to be doing for your career uh, before you even get there. Um, so we have a lot of opportunities that you can do that. Uh, field work, research, service learning. These students here actually made 3D masks uh, for the healthcare workers around the area of Pensacola when the pandemic began. Mentorship is very big as well. If you're looking to get connected with somebody in the area um, or close by um, that runs a, a company that you would like to be a part of uh, or even start once you graduate, you can absolutely do that as well. Uh, and once you're ready uh, to get out there and, and take on your career, uh, we'll definitely get you uh, set up with internships. Uh, we, we typically do not have an issue placing our students uh, and you'll go out there and have fun and just uh, get involved in all the chaos uh, and see if you can um, really help fix, fix a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Right, so our freshman class average um, last year, they came in with a 3.9 weighted GPA, 25 ACT and 1190 SAT, uh, but you do not need to have these scores specifically to be considered for admission into the university. Um, we'll just need your high school transcript, ACT or SAT test scores, and a $30 application fee or a fee waiver um, so that we can review your application for a possible admission. ACT and SAT test scores, we take either or, um, so you don't have to take both and we do super score as well. We'll also accept dual enrollment credits, uh, AP, IB, ACE, anything you have. Um, and please complete your FAFSA. Uh, I would tell students this all the time. You don't know what aid you could possibly receive um, unless, unless you're Jeff Bezos' kids. Um, but uh, just please fill out the FAFSA uh, because you can possibly receive something. We also have our automatic consideration scholarships as well that you would be eligible for. And we have virtual tours and events um, where you can learn more information. Uh, you can speak with me more and then uh, the rest of our admissions team as well. Uh, so thank you all very much. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Nate, thanks to you and the University of Western Florida to, to show some sunshine on this February day. Um, <laughs> next up, you're going to get to hear from Rebecca at DePaul University. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for um, being here. I'm also going to start sharing my screen um, with you all. And I wish I could tell you that I am sharing sunshine. I hope you'll probably see some in our videos, but um, I definitely want to um, let you know that it is freezing cold here as many of our other schools have shared, right? We just um, picked up from a um, snowstorm. So continues to snow here in Chicago. We get all the seasons, which we'll definitely talk about um, in just a few minutes. So just to kind of share some information um, about the institution, this is just some general, um, I think when students are looking at institutions, right, they want to know all of the praises that schools have received. I'm sure if your parents um, are joining and are sitting down next to you, they want to hear the rankings, um, they want to hear all of the recognitions of any institution. So you'll see that on the screen here, but what I really want to focus on today is that really nitty gritty information about DePaul. So how can I help summarize um, and make you feel like you are at DePaul. And that is by sharing some general information and then getting some nitty gritty about what makes us so unique and seeing if it may be a good fit for you. We were founded in 1898, we're named after St. Vincent de Paul, and we are the largest Catholic university in the nation. Now, by no means do you have to be Catholic. We focus on our Vincentian personalism, and that means that when you come to DePaul, that you are not just a number. You are a student who is going to be a part of a larger community. You're going to feel uh, part of the community right away, even though we are more of a medium to large school. We have about 23,000 students, 16,000 undergraduates, so more medium to large 
large, but our average class size is anywhere between 15 to 20 students. So you are going to get to know your professors, you're going to get to know your peers, and we welcome you in an environment where you may challenge one another. You might find students from many different walks of life that look like you, maybe have similar experiences, and those that are very, very different and completely different. And in a way that we see that is in our student body. So this is just a quick a snapshot of our student body, our average GPA. And one thing that I do want to draw your attention to is to our feeder states. Now for my students, I get it East Coast, you want to see like, hey, why isn't my state all in blue? It needs to be a top feeder state. That's my responsibility. I want to welcome you um, to DePaul. And we've seen an increase um, in our East Coast students, um, reason why we also have a regional and several of the states in our East Coast, in the East Coast area. But I also want to draw your attention to that first year retention. So as much as today we're going to talk about DePaul and you know that recruitment side of things, hoping that DePaul is a good fit for you, it's also about making sure that you find an institution that is going to do all of the things to keep you there and ensure that you graduate and you're very prepared for the next four years. Now, in a time uh, like right now, Chicago, that's still in a weird phase of an in-between at phase one, phase two, due to all the COVID guidelines. I know that it's been really hard to feel like you're part of any school as you're navigating the college search process. So I do want you to see our 4K uh, drone tour of our campus to hopefully give you a bigger perspective of DePaul. So let's take a quick look at our drone tour here. As you can see, you saw a good chunk of both of our campuses, very unique um, and something that I think is also unique to um, the schools that are on the panel today. So you saw our Lincoln Park campus, that's our vibrant environment, more of your traditional college campus. And like most schools in Chicago, we have a downtown campus because we wanna ensure that if you've been to Chicago or have heard of Chicago, that sense of vibrant, the Fortune 500 companies, internship opportunities, they're all there. At DePaul, we have over 300 different academic programs. So when you come here, we wanna ensure that as a liberal arts institution, you are able to take advantage of a wide range of academic programs. So although you may have an idea of exactly what you wanna study, that's gonna be your academic area within that college, many of you might be completely undecided. So you might look at a school like DePaul, a liberal arts city school, that's gonna give you the opportunity to dip your toes in many different areas. So let's say you're interested in any of our top programs, which you'll see listed here, film and television, ranked 11th in the nation, health and science, or maybe it's marketing. Maybe you don't have an idea of what you wanna do. Know that you can take classes in all our different schools and colleges, even if you are specializing in a particular area. Another of the academic programs that you might not see listed here as some of our most popular, they are not by the number, but they are popular in students that we enroll, and that is music and theater. So we are a liberal arts city school, but we also do have a liberal arts studies, or excuse me, a music and theater program that are conservatory style. We're a medium to large school, as I mentioned, we are a four year private school. And so I tell students, many students that are looking through their college search process right now, uh, that sticker prices, uh, obviously coming from an out of state perspective, sometimes you look at that and you might be wondering, okay, what is a $40,000 education really going to get me? Now that is before financial aid, as many of us have shared, but something that I do wanna share with you is that experience, right? The value of the institution. We have our own career center that models their expertise out of career community. So let's say you are a student interested in marketing. That doesn't mean that the long-term goal is getting you a job within marketing. Maybe that's one of the transferable skills that you want to obtain in a different career area or career path. 
We have five different cultural centers. So even though we are a Catholic school, I tell students we have many different opportunities, areas and safe spaces at DePaul. We have our LGBTQ center, our Latinx center, our African American and Black Diaspora Center, and many uh, um, others as well. We have mentorship programs, tutoring. We have our come team services for our students that need that mental health is super important. And we want to ensure that you have a safe space at DePaul. We have our own entrepreneurship center. Our entrepreneurship program is also nationally ranked and many others to help support you as you navigate your four years at DePaul. Next steps to apply some gentle reminders. We're an early action school. We're part of the Common App. Our deadline is November 15th, and we've been test optional for many years as well. So we do not require your test scores, um, and that is going to really give you an opportunity um, to be a part of DePaul. And then this is just my contact information. Thank you so much, Courtney. Thanks, Rebecca. I know that that six minutes goes by so super fast. Um, next up, you guys are going to get the opportunity to hear from Clemson University. And don't forget to put those questions in the Q&A before the end of tonight's program. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Brennan Ledford. I'm an admissions counselor with our undergraduate admissions office at Clemson University. If you will focus on the picture here on the screen, this will give you a small introduction to what our campus looks like. Clemson's gonna be set up like a target with the library right in the middle. It's a very walkable campus. It only takes 15 minutes to walk from one end of campus to the other. Stepping foot on campus really allows you to take in what that small college town feel is. I am gonna start us off with some admissions information and then back up into some more broad Clemson information. If you have any questions, I have Morgan in the chat answering questions along the way. Our admissions timeline does look the same every year. Our application opens on August 1st and instead of early action or early decision, what Clemson has is called priority notification. And what this is gonna entail is as long as you have your application submitted by December 1st and all supplemental information and by December 31st is gonna guarantee that you will hear back from us by mid-February, if not a little bit before that, but it's also gonna guarantee you are put into consideration for our merit-based scholarships. So that is that big piece of it. Our final application deadline is May 1, but anything after December 1 is just gonna be based on space availability. So we always recommend for you to go ahead and apply early. When you are applying to Clemson, I'm just gonna go through this really briefly. We have all this information on our website as well. We have three different application platforms that you can utilize, the Clemson specific one, Common App or Coalition, no preference of one over the other. We do have a $70 application fee, but if you fill out the financial section of our application completely, it's gonna allow it to determine if you are meeting a fee waiver. We then need your test scores to be sent directly from the testing agency, whether you take the SAT or the ACT. Keep an eye on our website to see if we do update anything about a possible possibility for being test optional for the next year or not. But as of right now, we are still requiring test scores. Then we just need you to submit your transcript directly from your counselor. What we are looking for in our review process, we have a holistic process. We're gonna look at a little bit of everything, but we definitely believe one of the clearest indicators of your fit at Clemson is gonna be your academic performance in high school. So we are gonna take a look at your weighted GPA a class standing if your school ranks, but if not, that's totally okay. And then the rigor of your classes. We are always gonna look at you in the specific context of your high school. So if your high school does things a little differently, that's totally okay. We're gonna be able to understand that. Test scores are included in this process. We super score both the SAT and the ACT. Choice of major and residency are also gonna be considered. Here at Clemson, we're admitting you directly into a program. So by choosing two different choices, you're maximizing your chances of acceptance. And if you are an out-of-state student, it's gonna make it a little bit more competitive just because we are a land-grant institution in the state of South Carolina. And lastly, really honing in on that holistic component, anything your application, your transcript, or your test scores aren't showing us, we wanna know about them for that holistic part. This is our freshman profile from the year before. It's gonna give you a good idea of what a competitive applicant at Clemson looks like, but it's not end all be all. We do not have minimum requirements and we do have that holistic review process. So last year we had around 28,000 students apply. We admitted around 17,000 to shoot for that freshman enrollment of around 4,200. This year we actually have around 43,000 applications. So that might look a little different. Our middle 50% for the SAT is a 1260 to a 1410. And for the ACT, it's a 28 to a 32. 
Now moving into academics, not only do we have renowned faculty, but we also have strong academic programs. We have around 80 different majors that you can choose from. Our average class size at Clemson is around 30 to 32 students and only a small number of courses at Clemson are going to be that large lecture hall style with a lot of our first year math and English classes being capped at 30 students. We're going to offer abundance of resources, whether that's going to be through our academic success center, our writing center, or your faculty. With a student to faculty ratio of 16 to 1, Clemson students are finding that their professors are accessible and committed to each student's individual success. If you want to explore our degree programs, go to this link here at the bottom, clemson.edu slash degrees. It's going to give you tons of great information. Some of our most popular majors are biological sciences, mechanical engineering, nursing, so many great options for you to choose from. The Center for Career and Professional Development at Clemson offers many different services such as career workshops, on-campus interviewing, experiential education opportunities, so much. We are consistently ranked within the top five for career services in the nation. 96% of our students within six months of graduation either have a job or another plans for another degree after the fact. We have internship and cooperative education opportunities at global companies. Our career service is going to help get you to where you would like to be. As far as student life goes, getting involved on Clemson's campus is not hard at all. We have over 550 different clubs and organizations that span from Greek life, multicultural, service, academic, and more. We have a Tiger Proud organization for each year that's going to allow you to explore all of these different options. We have 19 Division I athletic teams with 33 club sport teams as well. And then we also have intramural sports if you want that more, more relaxed, fun time. We have a 1,400 acre campus for 100 miles of the Lake Harwell shoreline, and we're nestled in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Last thing I'm going to touch on here is the Clemson family. This is not just a tagline. This is something that really holds true on our campus. We have so many different traditions for you to explore. We also have the number 11 alumni network and number five for students who love these colleges. Lastly, connect with us. There are so many different ways to talk with us virtually. We have virtual office hours with admissions counselors. We also have virtual daily tours with tour guides. Visit our website. It's going to give you those virtual engagement opportunities as well as counselor information for each counselor in different areas. If you have any questions, let us know. We're still in that Q&A and chat. Thanks, y'all. Thank you so much, Clemson. And um friend and the whole panel. Um, I'd now like to um, have our panelists think about the question that they see on in front of them right now. Um, I'm going to stop sharing and then you'll be able, they'll all, you will be able to see all of their faces, but I would like to ask them to share with the audience, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll go in the same order that you presented. So Suffolk up first. Yeah, that's a that's a really good question to bring up. Um, the probably biggest piece of advice that I give to any student going through the college search process is doing something exactly like you're doing right now, looking at a wide, diverse range of schools, applying on schools that are definitely like schools that you know you can get into, schools maybe a little bit outside of your profile, depending on what your academics look like. Same thing for affordability too. And also apply to schools all over the country too. You never know if you're going to like a school in Boston or like a school in Florida. So definitely look at all the opportunities that you have, small schools, big schools, and just see what one might fit you. And definitely find a way to tour schools, whether it be in person or virtual. That's key too. So just kind of piggybacking off of that, my first thing that I was going to say is tour, tour, tour. Um, I'm a huge advocate for touring schools. It's the best way that you can learn and see the campus. And thankfully, a lot of campuses are opening back up now, at least offering tours in small groups or broken up groups. So if you are a junior or a senior or even a, a underclassman, do your best to get to a campus and check it out and kind of get to know the lifestyle and also apply for any scholarships you can. That would be it, the next most important, in my opinion. Good piece of advice for you in the room right now. Parents, love your child. Children, hug your parents. Don't let the college exploration become part of an everyday conversation. It is part of your experience, not your whole high school experience right now. And secondly, be open to schools that you may not have heard of before. There's over 3,000 colleges and universities out here. Check them out. We're glad you're here today. Hey, uh, yeah, I, I would say be open. 
um, to all schools. I, I came from South Florida, and uh, when I first heard about UWF a while ago, uh, I'm not going to date myself. I feel old now. Uh, but when I first heard about UWF a while ago, I was like, ah, oh, never, not in my life. Uh, and, you know, I work here now. Um, and I love it. So uh, just be open that that school that that's kind of tugging you that you're kind of thinking about every so often, just take a look at it a little deeper. Yeah, I would say my, my piece of advice and so grateful that um, students are joining us and if you have your parents or whatever support system um, is there for you. I think a lot of times we think of the college church process as, you know, these fairs and reaching out to your counselors, whether that be your high school counselor or your admission counselor like we are. Um, I think that it also takes a little bit of soul searching, give yourself some time to learn about yourself, build a list of needs versus wants, um, and really think through who you are as a student, right? Do you thrive in a smaller environment? Do you like that your high school is small or that your high school is really big and there's students from all over? Or do you like that there's students from your community and you want more of a smaller environment? Um, how do you thrive? How do you learn? What are the subject areas that you love? So I think sometimes that's a missing piece through this college search is that it's a lot of like us responding to the needs that people want from us. Um, but a lot of it is that soul, soul searching too. So take that piece um, that that's going to continue through your four years at whatever institution or community college that you go to, um, but there's a little bit of soul searching that's involved through this as well. Absolutely. I'm just going to echo what everyone has already said. Take advantage of the virtual opportunities that are brand new for you. A lot of schools have never done this before, so they are letting you branch out and check out a lot of different schools. And also reach out to your dedicated admissions counselor. That is what we are here for. We are here to answer those questions and help you with whatever you might need. Oops, I meant to say I was on mute. Okay. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, we enjoyed having you. There's gonna be a quick survey when you close out this window. We hope that you will go ahead and fill that out for us. Um, sign up for more sessions. There's still two more um, this evening and this recording will be available um, within about a week. So and thanks again for our sponsor for this great program. Um, have a great night, everybody.